here how we factored. Is it clear why we simplified? Two from here with two from here, and instead of six, now I only have four. Is that part clear? And then I distributed here. 2x plus 7 minus 3x and plus 12. So negative x and then plus 19. And here I factor on negative 1 and I put it in front. So now it becomes x minus 19. Is that okay? Okay, so now let's work on this one. So uh, let's work on this one for one minute. See what happens. Any questions for me? Okay. Let me know if you need help. I hope this makes sense to you. Um, factoring and simplifying. It's a it's a very good question actually. Uh, the answer is, yeah. I know that this particular application may not be something that you would encounter every day of your life. Um, but it's supposed to um, empower you with a skill, an analytical skill, uh, analyzing things and getting from point A to point B. Not everyone has that capability. Yeah, no, I, I wouldn't say, if, unless you continue with math and go to uh, calculus, I wouldn't say uh, that this would be a an application that I can think of and give you an example for. Uh, but if from here you need to go to Greek calculus for your degree, math 230, uh, this is crucial. So I wouldn't say that this is your last math class. I cannot really give you an example. Yeah. But it all, it all ties in into factoring. How are we doing with this? Do we need more time? Okay, can anyone dictate? You will rearrange the numerator, how? Very good. Perfect. Then? Excellent. How many terms we have at the top? Good. 
I would like to uh, simplify these two or maybe these two I cannot do that because it's not a factor at the top great job okay so these two terms have something in common and what is that something Six. perfect Minus three cubed, um, four x minus one. Very good, awesome. Good. What is left from the first piece? Well, from the first term. Negative From the first term, what is left? That's it. I agree. What is left from the second term? What else? Do we all agree with this? Although it looked kind of difficult, it's really not that much. Only now I can do this. Now I'm allowed to. Because I'm simplifying factors. So x minus 3 cubed, and then I have 4x minus 2x, which is 2x, negative 1 plus six which is positive five and that's it I'm not saying that this problem will take 30 seconds it will probably take two minutes if you see what you have to do clean it up first because you don't want different factors to be right in the middle of other factors like that like numbers and then you factor the um, the greatest common factor and then you can buy like terms in, uh, in brackets and once you do that then you can simplify factors you feel a little bit better about this yes which part is not clear because I'd like to proceed with the review okay, um, which part let's address the the part that is not clear I wouldn't say it's not clear it's just that I got which part? Where where should I look? So six x minus three cubed, four x minus one. Is that clear? Yes. Okay. So six is out. This is out. Two of those are here, and I one is out. So there is one left. If you multiply this by this, you get that piece. Six x minus three to the third. This times this is that. Okay, and then minus this times this is 12 this is times this is x minus 3 to the fourth and this is alone so when you distribute this piece here you get that when you distribute this to this you get that and then you combine like terms 4x minus 2x is 2x and this is a negative 1 but positive 6 well, negative 1 plus 6 is 5 just practice these three and also you have five more here with answers and let me know on, on Wednesday and we'll do more is that okay better okay so let's see what else we can do I know we have like 12 minutes left so please choose anything that is crucial because I would like you to work on everything else between now and Wednesday so look at all this oh 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 you cannot do uh, nine this will be for the next test Nine will be for the next test. Uh, let's go over eight. No, that's it. Only nine. Yes, nine will be part of the next test. So we want to look at eight, and eight is f of x. And this is 2x minus 4, x less than 1 x squared plus 2 for x squared equal to 1. So here we're asked to find the domain and range and graph this function. So what type of function is it? It is a piecewise defined function. Very good. So remember we have to change I wouldn't I should not say I'll take it back. We we do not have to. I recommend this method. How would you change this into an interval notation? Excellent with a parenthesis. Awesome. Thank you. What about this one? How will you change this into an interval notation? Bracket. 
1 to infinity. Only because, and assuming that you are using the method I showed, then you will see that the domain is all real numbers, and 1 is the key point, or key x value. 0 must be in the table, always, and 1 is the key value here. Why? The function changes from this to this. So it must be an important point or x value in this case. So then I will copy under 1 this symbol facing left and this symbol facing right. Exactly under 1, not to the left or to the right of 1. Immediately under 1, and those two symbols are touching. The next step, what I'd like to do, in order not to forget, I will write on top of the table that to the left of 1, I will use 2x minus 4. And I will write on the top of the table on the other side that to greater than 1, 1 to infinity, I will write x squared plus 2. These two are two different things. The left one is what type of function? What type of function is this? Linear function. Perfect. What type of function is this? Quadratic function. Different story. Okay, perfect. Okay, because we're not doing transformations in this test, you're not going to have to graph quadratics. Because I, I chose a problem like this because I added section 2.5, but here we're not adding section 2.5. Okay, so you're not going to have quadratic, but since it's quadratic, I'm going to use it now to show you. Okay, so I see here uh, zero. Let's plug in 0 and tell me what you get. Please plug in 1, although we shouldn't, because it's a parenthesis here. I'm not allowed to plug in 1 in this. 1 is here. With this branch, 1 is not here. But you know what happens, so let's plug in 1. Right here inside the parenthesis. Inside the parenthesis, please write negative 2. Thank you so much. Correct. Okay, now I want to plug in 1 here. What do I get? And let's say we're going to plug in 2. When we plug in 2, we get 4 plus 2, which is 6. Perfect. So then we are ready to graph. After that, and we already this already clarifies that the domain is all real numbers. I don't have to write it again, but you can if you'd like to domain negative infinity to infinity. So now let's graph. From left to right, can you give me the first ordered pair that you will plot? Zero, negative four. Excellent. Zero, negative four. It's right here. That's zero, negative four. The next ordered pair that you will plot? One, negative two. What type of point is that? That is an open point, and here it is. You can only extend it to the left because it's from negative infinity to um, 1. You cannot extend it to the right. Okay, now next. Next ordered pair. 1, comma 3. Is this a full point or an empty point? Indeed. And then 2, comma 6. It's right here. We haven't discussed this. I'm sure you remember the quadratic function is a parabola. It's not a uh, line. But we're going to discuss that um, in the next section. And again in chapter 3. So looking at this, I can identify the range of this function. Can anyone give us the range of this function? negative infinity to negative 2 with a parenthesis. Union. Exactly. Negative infinity to negative 2, union 3 to infinity. Indeed. Thank you. Great job. Okay. Let's see what else we want to look at. Number 7, you said? Okay, perfect. Number seven, is this function symmetric? 
where is the function increasing, decreasing, constant, explain. Okay, so first of all, if I can fold the graph with respect to uh, the x to the y-axis, what am I doing? I can't see. Okay, I think it's here. Right here. Is it symmetric? Yes. yes. With respect to? Good. What type of function will that be? Even. Even function, symmetric with respect to the y-axis. These two are symmetric. This is on the y-axis. These two are symmetric. They, the function is even. Okay. Is the function constant anytime, anywhere? No. No, at any point it's constant, but not trend-wise. Okay, is this function increasing between? Is the function increasing? Okay, between? Okay, one more time. Is the function increasing between? We're talking about the x, only x. So between negative 1 and 0, the function is increasing. And between 1 and 3, the function is increasing. The function is decreasing on? Excellent. Yes, union. 0, 1. Very good. Awesome. Good. Good pick. Anything else?